Hello, welcome to my collective monk haul for the month of August. This will just be me opening all the packages I get throughout the month, as always. And for this first clip, we have lots of packages to open, so let's just dive right in. First, I'll go through some pre-orders I got through Barnes & Noble. Okay, and starting this haul off with a bang, we have volume 4 of our Not So Lonely Planet travel guide. I love this series, so excited to have this. These volumes come out really slowly, so I actually haven't read volume 3 because I didn't know when volume 4 was going to come out, but I am just over the moon to have this. This story is about a couple traveling the world, and at the end of their trip they plan to get married, but it's just like so heartwarming, lovely, wholesome, educational also. It's just great. Then I got volume 8 of Blue Lock. I have already read up through here in the story on the K-Manga app, so I'm just collecting the physical volumes, but I love this story. What more can I say? It's ridiculous, it's fun, it's campy. If you're in the mood for some, like, action, high-stakes, thriller-type sports manga, I would recommend this. And then something I was the most excited for, but when I saw that packaging, like, the ravioli packaging, I already had a bad feeling, and... This is the first time in a while I've gotten like such a damaged volume, like I rarely return stuff, but at this point I think I'll have to, which is really sad because I was so excited for this volume, especially if you know me, Yamush Petal is my favorite manga, and these two characters on the front are my favorite characters, and it's the first time they've gotten a cover in English because these are omnibuses, so they pick like one of the two covers, like this was the other option, and they finally chose this, I was so excited, but now I'll have to return this. I'm still excited for this, just a shame that it didn't come out as well as I had hoped. But moving on. This package I got from the Tokyo Pop store. I had opened something from them I think a couple months ago, but their coupon was still active, so I decided to pick this up. And what I got is volume 2 of Ogi's Summer Break. I had read volume 1 of this when it first came out, and I thought it was okay. This series like seemed perfect on paper, but the actual story didn't really live up to the hype I had, I guess, for it. So we'll see how this continues. I'm hopeful, but if this volume doesn't like improve a lot, I'll definitely be, you know, dropping the series. But yeah, the series is about this blind guy and this man who like dresses kind of like femininely and hasn't really been accepted elsewhere. So I thought it was going to be kind of like a I'll accept you for who you are because I can't see what you look like, like I love you for your personality, something like that, but that's like not really what it is so far, but we'll see how it is going forward. And before I open the box I'm most excited for, I'll share some pickups I got at Barnes & Noble. Recently, I got volumes 2 and 3 of Her Royal Highness Seems to be Angry. This is an isekai manga that I recently enjoyed volume 1 of, and I couldn't find volume 2 anywhere online. I don't know if it was just out of stock, but I saw it at the Barnes & Noble and I picked it up. So yeah, excited to continue with this one. It's about a girl who's basically like this queen warrior of her kingdom. She ends up dying and gets like reincarnated in the future. So now she's like in the modern world, but it's still her world, I guess. So it's like not really like being transported into a video game or whatever. It's just the future, but it's like a really different future. So I thought that was kind of interesting with this one. And then I know I haven't been sharing about like my normal novels recently, but I wanted to shout this one out. I read this from the library and then I had to buy my own copy because it was so good, Far From the Tree by Robin Benway. If you want a story about family, I guess that's like the main theme, and the trials and tribulations, I would highly, highly recommend this. And next we have this package. I don't know if anyone's noticed, but I only open packages on the weekends because like during the week I'm at work during the day and it's too dark by the time I get home. So anyway, this has been like sitting in my room since Monday, waiting for me to open it, and I am so excited! I bought this from eBay, actually. I haven't bought any manga on eBay in a long time. And what I got is almost the complete, like, as of now set of What Did You Eat Yesterday? Oh my gosh, I am like, just fangirling, I guess, at these volumes, and I'll explain why once I let y'all take a look at the covers. But even the spines, like, are very interesting. It's, like, very muted pastel, then it gets kind of, like, darker, and now these, like, rainbowy colors. I don't know. So I guess I'll start with how I even got into this series in the first place. Basically, like, a couple weeks ago, I was on a business trip, 
and I only had like my iPad and my phone with me and I had already like set some rules for myself that I wouldn't be reading as much digital manga anytime soon. I'm trying to get through like my own physical TBR. But my excuse was I didn't have any like physical manga with me on this trip, okay? What was I gonna do for a week? And that was when I went on my iPad and kind of like looked through some volume ones I had bought on Kodansha like a sale a long time ago. And this is one that was on there. I had bought in volume one. And I have a person I'm friends with on Goodreads and they have read the series like three times over and they always like leave reviews when they reread it and stuff. And I was like, okay, this person is obsessed with the series. So it must be good in some capacity, you know? So I decided to check out that first volume. And then I quickly hopped over to the K-Manga app and I've been reading it ever since. I think I've gotten up to like volume nine on there and that's like where the chapters kind of start going into the points territory if you're familiar with the app. So that's kind of where I was gonna have to stop anyway. And I found this set on eBay. I think I ended up getting these for around $7 each. So pretty good. I try not to buy manga used for more than half of retail and retail is about $13. So like a little bit over budget, but I needed these volumes immediately is what I'm trying to say. And yeah, I haven't even talked about the story, but basically it's about these two men who are together. They're like in their 40s at the beginning of the series and like where I'm at now, they're already like in their 50s. So the time passes by pretty quickly. And yeah, I just like really love the perspective of this from like an older lens in Japan. And yeah, it's just like a slice of life story, but it centers around cooking for sure. Like half these volumes are just them cooking, okay? So like if you don't care about that at all, this might not be the series for you. To be honest, I kind of skim through that sometimes too. It's literally just him like reciting recipes for half the volume. But the other half is like where the greatness of the story comes in. It's basically them like having conversations about like just like their daily lives and stuff while they're eating the food. And yeah, like they have kind of like opposite character archetypes. He's like the more like stoic serious one and he's like the happy fun silly guy he's like a lawyer he's a hairdresser just like I love the dynamic and there's like character development even though it's slice of life and there is like a story that's progressing and yeah I just love it a lot I've been so excited to read like my chapters of this every day and I'm very happy to own this there's 20 volumes out in English I think that's like pretty caught up with the Japanese release too I think this author is the one who did Oku which got an anime recently, you know, Oku, The Inner Chambers. And I tried to read that one, but it was too difficult for me because I'm too, you know, small brain. I don't know. It uses like this kind of old Englishy translation that I like could not understand, but I'm glad I am like in love with the series. So yeah, that is it for this clip. Quite a bit to begin the month. So excited about these volumes. I'm excited about everything else too, but like this was like taunting me the whole week. So yeah, see you in the next clip. Hello, we have a pre-order package from Barnes & Noble today. And first we have volume 7 of Imakoi. I am really loving this series for some reason. I read the volumes I get of it immediately. In volume 6, they kind of pivoted from the main couple to this side couple right here, the main character's friends. And I didn't know how I was going to feel about that, but I really like their story as well. So I'm excited to continue on. This one's only going to be 9 volumes, so coming to a close somewhat soon. And then I got volume 35 of My Hero Academia, a classic. I love this series. Not much more to say. It's a new volume. This arc that it's in right now is one of the best arcs in My Hero Academia, in my opinion. So if you kind of dropped off from the series at some point and are curious if it gets better or whatever, it definitely does, in my opinion. So yeah, I think I always say that when I show My Hero Academia volumes, but I love this series a lot. I don't talk about it, I guess, publicly that much, but I love this series. I've reread it so, so many times. After Yalpetta, this is probably the series I've read the most. I don't know. I never get bored of it. I like rereading the arcs and stuff. But yeah, always nice to have more physical volumes of it. And then I got Omnibus 1314 of Tokyo Revengers. I'm one Omnibus behind on this, but excited I'll have a little bit of a chunk to read now. So yeah. Hello, we have a large haul clip for today. Only one actual package, but you'll see as we go on. This one is another pre-order from Barnes & Noble. And it is volume 4 of My Happy Marriage, the manga. So happy to have this. I've actually started reading the light novel and I'm like on volume 3, which is equivalent to like way past where the manga is. So I'll be happy to relive the story in an illustrated format, but 
this part of the story it gets more into like the fantasy aspects of the world and the politics so if you're interested in that i would highly recommend continuing with the story i'm not sure how far the anime has gotten up to though so i'm planning to check that out soon as well i'm just like in the my happy marriage bubble i guess right now for sure and speaking of barnes and noble i picked up some more things from them in person I've talked about this before but the Barnes and Noble is about an hour away from me and I was already in town and I figured I could go return my busted Yelp head of volume so I did that and they could only give me store credit so then I was like you know let's just buy some manga while I'm here already you know and I ended up getting volume one and two of Cinderella Closet if you saw my recent volume one try vlog I had read volume one from the library so I decided to get my own copy and pick up volume two this is a very Princess Jellyfish-esque story literally the exact same thing as Princess Jellyfish so if you like Princess Jellyfish, I would recommend this one. And then I got this one, Delinquent Daddy and Tender Teacher. The employee at Barnes & Noble recommended this one to me, so I decided to pick it up in good faith, I guess. All I know about it is it's a single dad and the kids kindergarten teacher romance, but they knew each other in the past, like in high school, so it's like a second chance type thing. I don't know, I really like manga involving kids for some reason, like a parent-child story, like Yotsuba, for example, or our dining table even though it's the guy's little brother so yeah we'll see how i get along with this one and then i got volume one of windbreaker another one i tried in my volume one try vlog and i liked enough to buy the first volume myself this is a delinquent story about a guy like going to a famous delinquent school but it turns out that it's a little bit different than what he imagined and then i got volume one of akane banashi i've gotten so many comments asking me where the series was if i was gonna get it if i was gonna read it and okay i got the first volume i could have sampled it on shonen jump but from all the good things I've heard about this, I had enough faith to, you know, just pick it up blindly. But all I know is it's about Rakugo and it's a revenge story. And I tend to like revenge stories and I read one other manga about Rakugo. Actually, I've seen the anime for Descending Stories. I haven't started the manga yet, but I love that one. So yeah, interested to try this one out. And then I got volume two of Like a Butterfly. This is technically a reread for me. I reread the first volume recently and I enjoyed it. Just a very simple, cute high school romance series. I think this only has like 8 to 10 volumes, something like that, so not a huge commitment and in the present day I found it cute enough to continue. So yeah, that is all I got from Barnes & Noble, but there was another book sale that I went to this week and I picked up a large chunk of stuff, so let's just go through it. I went to this book sale last year, if you remember. All the manga is a dollar. They kind of have a random assortment of series, but last year I was able to get Yotsuba, Eyes, Twin Star Exorcist, Seraph of the End, like so much manga. And this time I like didn't go in with super high expectations. I was like, we'll just see what I end up seeing there. And I kind of fell into the trap of just getting some random series because they were cheap. Again, everything was like a dollar a volume. And I don't recommend this at all to so just like buy stuff because it's cheap. But you know, this book sale is for charity. It's for Planned Parenthood. So I'm justifying it by I'm supporting a noble cause. And I'm trying out some series, you know, Children of the Whales. I've heard good things about this one. The art is stunning. Hopefully I'll like it. And if not, it wasn't like too much of a loss for me to try it out, you know? Same with this one. I got volume one of Prince Freya. I've heard a couple people talk about this. I know it's like a pretty divisive one. Like some people hate it and some people love it. But I've been getting into this kind of, you know, like action, fantasy, political, drama type genre lately. And I think this is that. Correct me if I'm wrong. So yeah, excited to try it out, especially for a dollar. And then I got a bunch of volumes of Claymore. This is one I've also heard really good things about. I have a good friend on Instagram who it's like their favorite series. And all I know is it's about like these badass woman warriors fighting maybe monsters, aliens, something like that. So what's not there to love? Sounds great. A little bit darker vibes though than what I'm used to reading. So we'll see how I get along with it. But yeah, I ended up getting the first 11 volumes. That's what they had there. I scooped them all up and I'm excited to try it out. I don't know how many volumes this series has, maybe like 20, something like that. It has a box set, which like normally I would just get the box set if I was really interested in this series. But I mean, 11 bucks for these. And then if I end up wanting to buy the rest of the series, I think it'll be cheaper in the long run that way. And then I was able to pick up some volumes of Sand Chronicles. This is a series I've been on the hunt for for probably like over a year now, but it's on the Viz app now, so after that like got announced, I was kind of like stopping my rapid search, I guess, because I could read it on there. And the reason I haven't got a set of this before is because it's pretty out of print and expensive, especially some of the later volumes. So 
I know these are not like rare ones, but at least I can read some of the volumes physically if I can't find them and then just read the rest on the app. I always prefer to read something physically if I can, so yeah. I figured it wouldn't hurt to pick up a couple volumes of this and if I really really love the series I'll just try harder to hunt for the rest of them, but I'm content with this for now. And then the last thing I got is volume one of The Devil is a Part-Timer, the light novel. I have watched this anime a long long time ago and I know there's like a season two now, but I remember enjoying it and I've been getting more into light novels recently. So yeah, they had a ton of light novels, but they were all like volume 10, 14, 13, 12, 5. Like this was one of the only volume ones they had. So kind of sad, but a lot of it was also like isekai fantasy type stuff that I'm not like super confident that I'll love. So I figured I'd just get this one because it's a story I'm familiar with, just haven't revisited it in a long time. And yeah. So that is all the manga and light novels I got. I'll just quickly show like the novels I got. I won't go through them all, but if anyone's curious, since I already showed another novel I got in this haul, I'll just speed through them. These are all the hardcovers I got between two and five dollars. Just a combo of authors I recognized, recommendations I've gotten from friends or subscribers. I have an ongoing list of like just a bunch of recommendations I've gotten over the years. I usually get them from the library or Libby or whatever, but since these were so cheap, I decided to just get them. Let me know if you see anything in here that's like really worth reading, really good, you recommend or you don't recommend it, whatever your thoughts are. And it's the same case with the paperbacks, just authors I recognize, recommendations I've gotten, or just stuff that looked interesting, whatever. These two are the only ones I've read. I read them from the library and I enjoyed them enough to get physical copies, so book lovers and convenience store women. This one's like a really short story. You can read it in like an hour. That's why I was hesitant to pick it up myself, but since I got it for, okay, $4, a little bit pricier than some of the other stuff in here, but yeah, I really like this one. So yeah, that is my big chunk of haul for today. Lots of kind of random stuff, but you know, sometimes you just need a little bit of random stuff in your life and that is okay. So I'll see you in the next clip. Hello, welcome to the last clip of this haul and big surprise, we got some more packages from Barnes & Noble. The day I'm filming this is after the day after they announced that Crunchyroll and Bright Stuff are like merging slash Crunchyroll is taking over Bright Stuff. So I know a lot of people are probably looking for new stores to try out right now because who knows what that situation is going to bring about. And as you can see, I buy most of my manga from Barnes & Noble nowadays because with the membership and their like manga slash pre-order deals, it rounds out to be about Bright Stuff prices anyway. And then I use Alibris pretty much the rest of the time. So... Sorry I can't give more recommendations for people outside of the US. I know Sci-Fire is pretty popular for people in Europe especially, but with the shutdown of Book Depository as well, it's just rough out there for people outside of the US and I hear you, I understand, and I hope some more options, affordable options, are on the way for y'all. So yes, that being said, let's open these packages. And we have some exciting pre-orders, including volume 14 of Monthly Girls Nozaki-kun. I believe this is caught up to the Japanese release, that's why these are so far and few in between. But I love the series so much. I believe volume 13 kind of wrapped up some major plot points in the series, so I'm imagining this is kind of winding down, but always happy to have a new volume of this. And then I got volume 4 of The Remarried Empress. I think I've mentioned before, I read this on webtoon, so I'm like caught up, but always nice to have the physical volumes to reread. And next we have Omnibus 7 of Alice in Borderland. This ends at Omnibus 9, so I'm kind of stocking them up to read to the end. I really enjoy this story. I watched the first season of the drama and I've read up through Omnibus 4, I believe. So, yes. Just stocking these up to the end. And then these are not pre-orders, but these are some volumes they didn't have at the store when I went to Barnes & Noble the other day. But we have two light novels. We got volume 2 of Bride of the Barrier Master. And volume 4 of My Happy Marriage. I actually just finished volume 3 as I'm recording this, so I'm very happy to have the next volume because it ended off on a cliffhanger at the end of volume 3, and Bride of the Barry Master is another light novel I've been enjoying. These two kind of have similar vibes, except the protagonist in Bride of the Barry Master is much more strong-willed, I guess, while Mio is a very meek protagonist, but you see her character development throughout. So yeah, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, stay safe, stay happy, stay healthy, and I'll see you in the next one.